this, this, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and its territories and possessions around the globe is a great nation. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. That building across the river once legislated for a quarter of the planet and did it rather well and with far fewer spads and interns and whatnot than these guys require now. But the buffoons, shysters and sellouts over there are killing this country. Last night, central London was shut down. I had to abandon my cab, get out and pound the pavement all the way to the studio. So I got here with three minutes to spare. My hairpiece was all askew, not glued on in the proper position like now. I was wheezing like someone had just unplugged my iron lung. The reason, as I found out when I left the studio, was Albanian Independence Day, which is apparently way bigger in the metropolis than, say, St. George's Day or the King's official birthday. As we've discussed before, according to the Home Office, and I think this is an under as actually quite a big underestimate, some 2% of Albania's entire male population have moved here in the last year because you can never have enough Albanian men, can you? Even if they're just employed as extras on the receiving end of Liam Neeson in Taken 27. According to the BBC and The Guardian, these people are desperate refugees fleeing persecution with nothing but the clothes on their back. You wouldn't have got that impression from the scenes on Westminster Bridge, Lambeth Bridge, Millbank, Parliament Square, Birdcage Walk, Horse Guards, The Mall, Pall Mall, Trafalgar Square last night. These guys were driving Mercedes. Yeah, look at that. Uh, that's, that's the Albanian flag, by the way. Get used to it. You're going to be seeing a lot of it. They were driving. Oh, here comes some more. If you can hear the sirens in the background, that's the police coming to close another bridge for the convenience of the Albanians. They were also driving, as you can see there, Porsches and Lamborghinis. These are cars that cost north of 120,000 quid. And like that, see that? They were using them to do these spectacular wheel spins, which is uh, fun. To, it's really fun. I mean, that's, that's okay doing it in whatever that is, but doing it in a Lamborghini is pretty good. And they were doing wheel spins on Westminster Bridge, Lambeth Bridge, a bunch of other bridges, which is fun. I, I, for my own part, I certainly would have enjoyed seeing it on the bridge over the Buna River at Skoda while tootling to my holiday villa in Castrat. But oddly enough, the Albanians only seem to acquire the Lamborghinis and Mercs and BMWs after they wash up on the shores of Dover and Folkestone. Last night, as I was strolling the boulevards of the new Tirana on Thames, the Metropolitan Police, whose cars were everywhere, closed... Uh, the bridge behind me. So we asked the coppers, why are you closing the bridge? And the officer explained that it was because the Albanians were doing their wheelies on the bridges and backing up traffic for miles. So the useless plod solution to that was to close down the bridges and back up traffic for even more miles and instead have the Albanians doing their supercar wheel spins in Parliament Square and the Mall. You don't need a constabulary to make Decisions that stupid. The coppers are useless. They're useless for burglary. They're useless for rape. They're useless for stabbings. They're useless for grooming gangs. And now we know they're useless for basic traffic management. They colluded with the Albanians to hand them a great victory. Who controls the public space? In London last night, Albanians controlled the public space. We invited the chief constable of the Met on the show to explain his insane decision, but he decided uh, to decline our invitation. And the best we could get was a statement from Scotland Yard spokesperson Pete Davey. Uh, police became aware of a large group of vehicles and people congregating in the southeast one and southwest one area. Officers worked to minimize <laughs> disruption. Some diversions were put in place. One person was reported being arrested. No further details, unquote. You didn't minimize disruption. Uh, you maximized it. You shut down the key arteries of central London for Albanian Independence Day. How, how crazy is that? By the way, I'm talking about this because it's a microcosm of how wrong things have gone basically for this millennium so far. You have a problem of Albanians uh, with Albanians, so the people you punish 
are the lawful uh, native residents and citizens of the United Kingdom. Uh, because that's true with everything, isn't it? Oh, the Ukraine war, we've got to help plucky little Ukraine so grandma will have to freeze to death. Oh, uh, look, some uh, guys are blown up buildings in New York, so you have to take off half your clothes and, and shuffle like a great uh, bovine herd through the airports until the end of time. This, what happened last night, is where it's all gone wrong for free societies for the last 20 years. Um, why is Albanian Independence Day so big? Well, right now it's because just 2% of Albanian males have moved to the UK. By next year's Albanian Independence Day, will be, what, 4 to 6%? Uh, I'm putting this request in a year in advance. We'd like the Chief Constable from Scotland Yard to be in studio for next year's Albanian in Independence Day. We're getting it in early, so we expect you to say yes. The useless British political class have wrecked your country and they're not done yet. Calvin Robinson of this parish tweeted. Uh, look at this. He's showing you some footage of the Albanians bringing uh, the streets of London to a standstill. Useless coppers there. Uh, maybe we can get that useless copper on the show. And he just put three words above it. Not an invasion. To which the Member of Parliament for Barry St. Edmunds, a fellow called Christian Wakeford, responded, approximately 0.4% of the UK population is Albanian, only slightly less than GB News viewer share. <laughs> Play another tune, you hate-filled muppet. Listen, uh, what's that name of that MP again? What's he called? Chumpy McCars Pants? Whatever his name is, I've forgotten his name. But that 0.4% is an underestimate. Right now, when you have a thousand, quote, asylum seekers washing up on the shores of southern England, about 60% of them are estimated to be Albanian. But let's pretend that 0.4% is actually accurate. That's an awfully high number for a nation that is neither a member of the Commonwealth nor of the European Union. 30 years ago, the UK census recorded only 338 Albanians in this realm. So Albanian Independence Day on Westminster Bridge would have been a lonely affair. Just a decade ago, the 2011 census recorded a mere 13,295 Albanians in England with 100 and, another 120 in Wales. Uh, if Christian Drakeford, MP for Barry St. Edmunds, is correct, it's now 0.4%. The Albanian population in the UK is now over 270,000. So it's 20 times what it was a decade ago. All on the watch of the Cameron May Johnson Trust Sunak Crap Servative Party. If it increases 20-fold in the next decade, that would mean 5.5 million Albanians doing wheelies on Lambeth Bridge. The good news is that there's only two and a half million people left in Albania. But sink in about that idiot MP from Bury St. Edmunds. I may have to stand against him in 2024. Think, think about what he's saying. Over 10, on his numbers, over 10% of the population of Albania is now living in the United Kingdom. These feckless men and women across the river will cost you your country.